and welcome to the video and with a brand new year I decided I want to start a brand new mini series for the channel It's going to be called why I think this game is so great I've played a ton of games over the years that meant a lot to me or they aren't necessarily the most critically acclaimed games But they're games that mean a lot to me and I decided why not start with Call of Duty 2, one of my all-time favorite Call of Duty games that I don't really think is talked about enough. So yeah, guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and maybe a share. But guys, let's dive right into this. I remember the holiday of 2005 being the first time I ever played an Xbox 360. I actually played one at a Walmart where they had one hooked up so that people could play demos. And I remember the TV being hung so high that it felt like it was breaking my neck just to look up at the television. But the demo that I decided to play was actually this mission you're seeing here. I decided to play Call of Duty 2 and I even remember all the way back then, I thought gameplay and graphics wise, this is the pinnacle. There's no way games will ever be better than this. And I remember thinking that there's going to be people lucky enough to get an Xbox 360 for Christmas and be able to experience this game in their homes. And even to this day, Call of Duty 2 is still a very special game to me. And it's honestly one of my favorite Call of Duties in the entire franchise. So diving straight into the single player, one of my favorite things about this game is that there's no main character or hero. You are a cog in the machine. You are a soldier on the front lines, which frees this game from being tied down by any sort of restrictive narrative. The game has three separate campaigns spanning across the globe to give gamers a broader, more grand look at World War II that wouldn't be possible if we were being tied down by a single character in their narrative. Instead, each campaign focuses on having a more primal feeling. For example, the Russian campaign's theme is more focused on desperate survival, as you, an untrained conscript, are fighting during the siege of Stalingrad, as freezing blizzards sweep through the ruined city, causing soldiers to freeze and shiver as they just attempt to stay warm and survive. Each campaign has its own real theme to it, which makes the game have a really high replay value for even just the single player. You'll also be playing as the British as they fight through Africa and eventually go into Europe, and you'll also eventually get to play as the Americans as they go through D-Day and go through France and eventually cross the Rhine. And all these things are things that you may have played in other games, but Call of Duty 2 goes out of its way to make it fresh. We've all stormed the beaches of Normandy, but this game tries to do it different, and honestly, it makes this game stand out amongst other World War II shooters. Call of Duty 2 also brought many innovations to the series that have been in almost every single entry in the franchise since. Innovations like regenerating health or AI improvements to both your teammates and the enemy like the ability to flank, the ability to suppress you with gunfire, the ability to set up machine gun nests, and even lay traps. If you wounded an enemy soldier, there was a chance that he would lay there and pull the pin out of his grenade and wait for you and then detonate it to get a cheap kill. It was things like that that made this game so interesting and they were dynamic so you, they were never the exact same way every time. They also had tank segments in this game to break up the, the actual infantry combat. But the game is not perfect. There are quite a few bugs, not a whole lot, but there were some that are pretty hilarious and not to mention the grenade spam. The Germans definitely knew how to throw a lot of grenades. Not to mention the open map design in a lot of this game's missions is incredible. It is such a breath of fresh air, especially when comparing it to newer Call of Duty games that you get to choose the way you engage the enemy. Take the D-Day mission for example. When you climb to the top of the cliffs and it's your time to choose how you engage the Germans, you can go left, you can go right, you can go up the middle, you can go through the trenches, you can go through the bunkers. It is completely up to you and you don't really get that player choice in newer Call of Duty campaigns. And the new open map design combined with the new innovations like regenerating health go hand in hand together because say you didn't have regenerating health and you were playing this map you would probably play it the exact same way every single time because as you take damage you'll just head to the next health pack eventually you'll learn where all the health packs are and you'll play these missions the exact same way but this game giving you choices to go left right up the middle and having regenerating health and new innovations like the new ai and how they flank and change the way they play every single time you play these missions makes these missions endlessly replayable and still fun today years and years later you could still play this game and have a great time and it will still feel fresh every single time you go back and play which is something you can't say about new call of duty games so if you have not played call of duty 2 i would say pick it up for the single player alone which is something you literally can't say about other call of duty games 
And as far as multiplayer is concerned, I'm not going to dive too far into it because for the most part, the community has moved on, which is a shame, but this game was an absolute blast back in the day. I did capture some gameplay for you guys, but it was so fun. And you got to keep in mind, this is before Call of Duty was what it is today. There were no creative class. There was no kill streaks. It was just really tight, fun gameplay. And I can't tell you how many times me and my friends would laugh ourselves to death when we throw a bunch of smoke grenades into a building and get into a melee fight together. It was absolutely hilarious. This game was so much fun on Xbox Live. And if I could get enough people together to do a LAN for this game today, I would totally do it just to relive this game's glory days. So yeah, this is why I think Call of Duty 2 is so great. It is absolutely one of my favorite Call of Duty games ever made. And if you haven't played this game before, definitely pick it up. It's probably super cheap today and it's backwards compatible on Xbox One. So if you're looking for a good Call of Duty single player, this is the game for you. And if you can get enough people to land this game, you're in for an amazingly fun time. But guys, that's all I have for today. If you like the video, be sure to like it. I do make new videos every week. So be sure to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.